Hello folks. In today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to install and set up a Gemini server. This video will not go into what Gemini is and the uh, benefits that it brings. Uh, I'm just going to be getting down to the brass tacks of uh, setting up a Gemini server. Uh, what you're looking at right now is my browser of choice. It's a browser called Crystal, which I can use to browse Gemini sites. I can also use it to browse Gopher sites as well. Uh, now, the technical term for a Gemini site, as it were, is called a capsule. I'm probably going to slip into calling it a site because of, you know, how established the World Wide Web, has, uh, World Wide Web is right now. But we're going to be putting together something similar to this, obviously a much more modest version in the time frame of this video, uh, which will be served on another domain. So. Uh, what I've got in my browser here is I've got my uh, DigitalOcean uh, dashboard uh, and I've got the IP address here. So I've just set up the most basic DigitalOcean droplet, which is $5 a month as of time of recording. It uses the latest long-term support version of Ubuntu. And I am going to be using passwords to log in, uh, but I, as I understand, but keys are safer. But just for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to be using uh, some standard passwords for now. Now, what I have also done is I've gone into my domain uh, registrar, which is gandhi.net, and I've put as the main A record the IP address, which is 165.22.123.166, as you can see here, and I've put that as the A record for who, what, where, dot download. Now, who, what, where, dot download is the domain that we'll be using today. It's one that I picked up in a sale quite a few years ago, um, and I don't really have much of a use for it other than sandboxing. So. Now that we've actually spun up our DigitalOcean droplet, uh, I'm going to go into our server here. I'm going to SSH into the root account, root at. And because I've not logged into it before, it's going to want to make sure that I'm, a log, you know, I know what I'm doing. Uh, and there we go. Now it's asking me for my password. And we're in. Great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a user specifically for the purposes of uh, serving our Gemini capsule. Uh, so that's just a very simple command. Add user Chris. I'm going to call him Chris to keep it simple. But obviously your own uh, user will be uh, will be different. On my main uh, Gemini capsule server, uh, I just refer to it uh, as Gemini. And you make sure that this is correct. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give pseudo privileges to uh, that user. So I'm going to do user mod dash a upcase g pseudo Chris. Uh, now, all of the commands that I'm using uh, and the notes that accompany this video will be included either in the description or however various notes are accompanied in such a video, you know, if this video is distributed elsewhere. But yeah, look in the description for uh, for these these commands. Um, I will also be referring to notes, so I don't consider it a point of shame. It's just uh, there's a few there's a few parts to it, but fundamentally installing your Gemini server in my opinion, is actually easier and more straightforward than um, setting up your World Wide Web server. So we'll just do that here. Great. Now we can log out. We can log back in by going SSH username with the same IP address. And then that password that we created along with the account. Fantastic. So we're in our fresh brand new user ready to actually put together our website. Now, there'll be a few directories that I'm going to just create straight off the bat. This is just to keep things organized. Those of you with your own preferences may wish to do this a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do make the bin, and that's where the, um, the executable file of the server we'll be using will go. Uh, I'm going to be using a server called, a server software called Agate. Uh, it's a uh, very, very lightweight. Uh, very, very simple, straightforward, easy to use, very fast. I quite like it. Uh, I'm also going to do make the certs. This is where our TLS certificates will go. They will be self-signed uh, because, um, well, I'll, I'll explain that when we when we get to the certificates. And I'm going to do make the Gemini. And this is where our Gemini uh, 
files the actual content of our website will go. And whilst we're on that note, let's go into Gemini. Uh, and actually, obviously, if I do ls, it'll be an empty directory. Uh, but I can do nano index.gmi. This is where the default place where you would expect this is like your equivalent of an index.html uh, file is. Uh, but of course, the uh, the the uh, how we put together a Gemini page is a little bit different. So um, it's very, very simple, much more simple than HTML. So we do uh, hashtag space heading. Um, a paragraph so denoted just by line breaks. This is a paragraph. If I can type properly. Uh, we got heading twos. Links are done like this, I believe. Right. Uh, Gemini, colon slash slash. And then you just do a space, or as many spaces as possible. And you do Chris's uh Chris's uh page. Okay, great. And then we'll just do we'll close that. Uh one one second actually. Just to keep it neat. There we go. And then we do ls, we've got index.gmi, which is perfect. So we'll go back into our home directory and we've got our three uh directories there. So let's actually download and in install the agate software. Now there are no dependencies required. We're just literally downloading a file and making it executable. So we just go to CD bin. Then what we'll do is we'll go over to the World Wide web, specifically github.com. Uh, and of course, I will link this in the uh, description and notes accompanying this video. Uh, it's uh, licensed under the MIT license, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, license MIT. Um, and I think it says here, view license, here we go. Uh, oh, no, the Apache license, sorry, correction, the Apache license. Um, but there we go. But yes, okay, great. So I'm going to go to the releases section. Now, one thing that I, I would like to, um, to, to, to remind you folks, just simply because it's happened to me uh, a whole bunch of times, is to be very careful about typos. Uh, it has, I have spent so, so, so many hours uh, trying to work out what's causing a problem when it turns out that I'm, you know, there's, there's a typo in a directory or uh, it's pointing to a wrong, you know, something's pointing to a wrong thing. So um, in a lot of cases, it's always worth just being extra vigilant. Now, I'm going to go to the latest release um, and I'm going to go to the one that applies to the digital ocean droplet that I, or, or, you know, but if you're on different architecture, your mileage may vary, but this is the one uh, that I'm going to use. It's a gate x86 underscore 64 unknown Linux GNU dot gz. So I'm going to right click on it and do copy link location. And then I'm going to go back into the terminal and we're already in our bin directory. So I'm going to go w get and then i'm going to do the url to the file that we uh, that we want to download and there we go it's downloaded so we'll go ls downloaded there now we're going to use gun zip to uh, to unzip it so we just do gun zip and then the file name and it has unzipped the binary that's all it's done just a humble binary now we're going to just make it executable, which is a very simple command, chmod plus lowercase x. No, nope, I've got to do that. And of course, type the file name, that would help. So uh, chmod plus x, and then the file name, that's more like it. And then if I go ls, you can see that the uh, file, the color of the file has changed, denoting that it is now an executable file. Brilliant. We've just installed the agate server. Now we need to set it up and get it running. Okay, so we have our content, we have our server, and it's ready to go. So I'm just going to uh, check my notes over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it up as a systemd service so that it would run on boot using a, um, a, a, a service file. So we're going to just go to nano etc systemd system agate.service. I'm just going to copy this over myself. You'll need the sudo command for this. So it's sudo nano 
etc systemd system agate dot service. And then we've got the password. Okay, and then we go. It will be an empty file. We'll be creating a new file here. Uh, and hopefully in the notes, I will be providing you with uh, what should be the, uh, well, what should be this, right? Um, and I'm just going to go through it with you. Okay. So at the top here, we've got description, a gate. That obviously describes what this file is for. Uh, service, user, Chris, type, simple, exec, start, which goes, right, so this first part will point to the executable file to run the server. So it's in home, it's in Chris, it's in bin, it's a gate, and that's the executable file itself. Dash S, and then we go into dash dash content, and then we go, it goes to the content, which is in home, Chris, Gemini. Then it's Then it goes to key, which goes to home chris certs that's the other directory that we've made key.pem then it then the next one is dash dash cert which goes to home chris certs cert.pem then we've got dash dash host name who what where dot download so that obviously points to the to the to the domain that is going to be uh, providing our gemini page gemini capsule and then i've got dash dash lang ing gb uh, if you're from the united states of america you do uh, en dash us but since i am from the united kingdom of great britain northern ireland as of time of recording this video uh, i am uh, going to be using en dash gb okay and there we go so that is the file uh, and then I will include this text. Obviously, where it says Chris, you will have to change it to your to the name of the user you, that you're using. Uh, and uh, and obviously, you have to adjust your URLs down here. So, you know, if you're doing home slash Chris, you're going to want to change it to like home slash your username. Um, you're going to want to change it to you want to change content to where the Gemini uh, content is you're going to want to point it to your certificates and your keys and you're going to want to point it to the domain uh, where you are serving up the capsule uh, you can also serve this through uh, ip addresses or you can do it locally on your own local network using local hosts and things like that but uh, this is the way that i've done it for for my gemini capsule and i'm sure most people would probably who, who are having a gemini capsule that's public on the web on the internet sorry uh will uh we'll, we'll probably be doing something similar to this right so i do control x in nano to save it and there we go fantastic now let's do the keys now uh as far as i understand it and i could very well be wrong here is that uh the gemini protocol by and large is not only happy with self um self-signed uh, tls certificates but actually prefers them uh, because and it's quite understandable why when you start to look at the practicality of having centralized certif certificate authorities and i don't want to get into the politics of it too much but it's one of those things where centralized certificate authorities sound pretty good and the culture of the world wide web does tend to, to tend to favor them and tend to like them uh, in a lot of these cases they're only ever as strong as their weakest link and sometimes you could get uh, you know, sometimes these are for-profit companies that have obviously their own agenda, uh, and you never know when one government or another could lean on a certificate authority to uh, invalidate or mess with keys and certificates and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that can go on behind the scenes that um, can actually make all of this encryption and certification a lot weaker than um, it might first appear chains only as strong as its weakest link so at least for self -cert of, uh, self certificates in the context of gemini as it stands and in the uh hopes and aims of having a more decentralized internet that doesn't rely on things like centralized certificate authorities self-signed certificates are probably like the best compromise out of all of these uh with gopher for example you don't have uh, any kind of um of that kind of certification or encryption at all it's all out in the open just as you would with http so um and and there is more documentation written by the the developers of the protocol on on this um and this is not my area of expertise so i'm sort of jump you know i'm, I'm sort of uh 
explaining it as I understand it, which might not necessarily be entirely correct, okay? Um, but anyway, so we've got our, uh, the, the command here that will self-sign our certificate. It's rather straightforward. Um, okay, it's not that straightforward, I'll be honest. But <laughs> uh, I've got my domain here. You'll, you will probably want to replace this with your own domain. Uh, this, for example, uh, day, dash days 3650 means that the certificate will expire in 10 years time. You can obviously adjust that as you wish. And it will also output our certificate and keys. So I will just copy this. However, I will actually just move into the certs folder. Now, like I say, you may wish to structure your directories a little bit differently, depending on whether or not you're using your server for other stuff as well. Um, whether or not you're using you know, the same users and all this kind of stuff. Um, and you may wish to change the name of cert.pem to like cert.gemini.pem and, and, and so forth. So there are things that you can, uh, you can chop and change here. But yeah, uh, that looks all good to me. And there we go, writing the old keys. Okay, now my notes here are telling me to uh, to actually put some uh, some content in the folder, but we've already done that. So let's use systemd to actually start and enable a gate. All very straightforward here. If it works, there could be a typo at any stage along the way. Oh, how many days have we lost to, uh, of our lives to just finding a for, to typos in config files somewhere? And there we go. And that's it. So if I bring up my Crystal browser, open a new tab, and go to who, what, where dot download, we have it. Heading, paragraph, heading to Chris's page. And that takes me right back to my page. There we go. So in the length of time of this video, uh, we have created a Gemini server and a Gemini capsule and deployed it using a very small number of commands. This could quite easily be streamlined, I'm sure. Uh, and of course, if a gate were to be included in Ubuntu's repositories, it would probably be able to do a lot of the systemd stuff um, itself anyway. But for all intents and purposes, it really is just that simple. So um, this is pretty much the end of the video. Um, I, I think I've, I've demonstrated what I want to demonstrate. So um, thank you all very much for watching. That's about it from me today. Um, if you have any questions, please do feel free to get in touch. Um, Mastodon's probably the best place to find me. Um, I'm Chris Ware at linuxrocks.online. I'm sure there's a link somewhere on the channel page or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely on Mastodon more than the comment section of, of my YouTube videos because, of course, you know, decentralized and it's quite fun over there. So there we go. Um, I'm probably going to burn the droplet now because I've, I've, uh, I've made, you know, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. That's about it from me today. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Toodaloo.